All right, so this is going to be our last topic. I was going to have you guys do a case study, but um, I'm just going to skip that. We're just going to do this as our last topic. You'll have a quiz on this, and there's a little assignment that goes with this, and then we'll be finished with this unit. Um, hopefully, everything will be handed in for you guys before uh, report cards go in, so try to get this finished. This is, um, I'm not going to give you any fresh work this week, so you'll have uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to get this little assignment done, okay? So what we're going to look at here is healthcare in Canada, and again, this is one of those um, topics that I could spend hours on going through the whole development of healthcare in Canada, but really going to really break, like, skip through a lot of this stuff. Okay, so if we look at the evolution of healthcare, um, in you guys probably remember this from history, but the British North America Act, and basically the British North America Act said that each individual province was responsible for establishing and maintaining hospitals, asylums, and charities. All right, so they just had to make sure there was hospitals set up, there were asylums set up, and that there were charities set up. But most people, up until um, oh gosh, just for years and years and years, were paying for health care services by cash or in the time of the depression they were paying a lot of people would pay you know you'd hear stories about doctors getting chickens or ducks or wood or potatoes or if you were living out east they got lobsters as part of their payment okay fruits and vegetables so um, up until the time when in the 1960s People had to pay out of their pocket for their medical bills, and that made a lot of people go bankrupt. Right now, the only country on earth that has half decent health care where people go bankrupt is the United States. All right? So, um, like I said, most health care was privately delivered. So, if you needed to see a doctor um, or a dentist or whatever, you had to pay out of pocket for it. All right? So, in 1947, this guy whose name is Tommy Douglas, right? You probably heard his name before. He um, their, his party in Saskatchewan started hospital insurance plans. Now, all these people were coming back from the war. They didn't have jobs or their jobs were gone. They had changed into different types of jobs, so they didn't have a whole lot of money to pay for going to the hospital. So um, they really, really lobbied the government to try to help them be able to afford hospital care. So it first started in 1947. All right, and then as the years expanded, all right, we talked about other provinces. We're talking about having not just insurance for in the hospital, but having insurance. So if you have to go see the doctor, you don't have to physically pay the doctor out of pocket. Um, doctors fought against it. The uh, Canadian Medical Association fought against having public insurance. Um, dentists fought against it as well. The dentists won. That's why we still don't have, um, you know, coverage for dentist. But anyway, by 1966, um, the health care plan had gotten to the point where uh, the government paid half and you had to pay half. But what was happening still is doctors were extra billing so that they could make up the money that they weren't able to make because up until now, they could charge whatever they wanted for you to go see them. So in 1966, they had the 50-50 health care plan and doctors were allowed to extra bill. Right, so go on years and years and years. By 1984, we have the Canada Healthcare Act. All right, so in the Canada Healthcare Act, it says what the criteria for healthcare is, and they also banned extra billing. So you, the doctors get paid what they get paid. And if you're ever going to the billing programs, um, it, it, they don't get paid a whole lot of money. Like, of course, specialists get a lot more money for things, but just a regular doctor doesn't make tons and tons and tons of money. Okay, so what was the purpose? Well, the purpose was to make sure that everybody had access to health care in a timely manner, no matter how much money they made, all right? So you didn't have to have a whole lot of money to see a doctor. You could be poor, you could go see a doctor, you could be middle class and see a doctor, and you got to see um, a doctor not five years down the road, but within a normal, timely access, all right? So that's the first one to ensure that every Canadian has timely access to all medically necessary health services, regardless of ability to pay. And the other thing was to make sure that no Canadian ever lost their homes, lost their businesses, or went bankrupt because of having to pay um, health care bills. All right, And this is one thing you do not see in the United States. You see a lot of people going completely bankrupt because of health care bills. All right? it's, it's really, really quite sad, actually. Okay, so the basic principles of um, 
the Health Care Act, again, is fairness so that everyone kind of gets the same amount of care and the same type of care, and then it's equal. So no, nobody gets treated differently because of color or their religion or their amount of money. Everybody's treated as equal as possible. Okay. So let's go through the Canada Health Care Act, which is enacted in 1984. And there have been amendments to some of the clauses in here as well, um, but we're not going to worry about all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the first thing is, okay, so the five tenants. The first thing is it has to have public administration. So it has to be run as a non-profit. So you can't have people making money. Whenever you're watching, um, I'll say Grey's Anatomy or whatever those doctor shows are, quite often they're like, you know, get called down to the CEO of the hospital who says, oh, we can't afford this and we can't afford that and all that kind of stuff because they are for-profit hospitals. But here, obviously, they have to make sure they stay within a budget, but nobody's making money from healthcare. All right. So it can't be, it has to be nonprofit and it has to be administered by a public authority. Okay, so it can't be a private company that, that, that administers it, right? You can have private public partnerships like our hospital is, which I think is a great big scam, but anyway, that, that's how it is. Okay, comprehensiveness. Um, basically, what comprehensiveness need, means is that any necessary health service provided by hospitals or doctors have to be insured. All right, so you you go to the hospital, you need to have your your heart attack fixed, and you will be covered. Okay, um, and the other rule is that um, doctors or any other healthcare providers working within healthcare are um, paid reasonably. Like they, they have a, a proper compensation package for the services that they provide, all right? So for a doctor, there's a whole billing program. So if you go in for a regular visit, um, you know, they get paid their $3 or whatever it is. And, um, and that's just how that works, all right? So they all have, there's a billing program and you can't charge more than what the billing program says, but you do get paid for seeing people, all right? Um, and the other thing too is necessary health services are decided on by each province. So for example, um, wart removal on your hand used to be covered in Ontario. It no longer is covered in Ontario. But if you, if you went to Newfoundland, it would be covered in, in Newfoundland, all right? So each, each province can make up their mind about what is a necessary health service, okay? Uh, universality. This means that all residents in Canada are entitled to the same level of care. Now, this is kind of impossible based on where a lot of people live, but the theory is that no matter what, you're going to get the same care um, if you're poor compared to if you're really, really rich. All right, so all insured residents are entitled to the same level of health care. It is difficult if you're living somewhere way, way up north where there aren't specialists. It's going to be really, really difficult for you to see a specialist. All right, and you may have poor health care just because people just don't want to move up there to to do health care. All right, so you may not get the same level of expertise. So basically, no one is discriminated against on income, age, health status, religion, color, everybody has the same um, entitlement to the same level of health care. Okay, the next thing is that no matter where you live in Canada, you are covered, you are covered, all right, you are insured. So if you were living in Ontario and you went to a, on a trip to Alberta and something happened to you, you would be covered um, by Ontario's health care system. If you move to Alberta, then after three months, you, um, for the first three months, you're on Ontario's healthcare system. I think it's three months, maybe it's three weeks. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But after a certain waiting period, you are put on that province's um, healthcare insurance, okay? So citizens are covered province to province, and they are also covered in the province if they move after a certain waiting period, all right? During that waiting period, their home or where they came from, that province covers them. Now, the other thing, too, that is kind of, um, people have a hard time with is you do have limited coverage if you're out of the country, but it's very, very limited. All right. So if you ever go on trips out of the country, they really stress that you get travel insurance because, um, if something happens to you, you could be completely charged out of pocket. And then especially if something happened to you in the United States, you'd just be reamed. All right. Just completely ripped off. So make sure you get health insurance before you leave the country. All right. Uh, the last one, number five, is accessibility. And again, this one's a little bit difficult because people have different situations or different areas that they live. But 
what they try to do is to make sure that all insured people have reasonable access to healthcare facilities. All right, people from up north do get flown down south. We have travel grants, so if there's not a specialist in North Bay, if you have to travel to Toronto to see somebody, there you get reimbursed financially, or if you go to Sudbury, you get reimbursed financially. So they try to help everyone get to um, healthcare facilities. All right. Now, originally when this was first made, the primary concern was financial, so to make sure that everybody um, could see specialists or see doctors without having a financial burden. Now it's changed to, to um, talk about um, wait times, all right, because everyone's all upset when they have wait times to, for elective surgery or, you know, you even hear people say, oh, I was in a last night for 12 hours because I stubbed my toe and no one saw me and all sorts of stuff. And I always just say, I, and I know people will fall through the tr trap, fall through the cracks, but if you go to merge and you're waiting 12 hours, they triage you. So when you go in and you tell them you stubbed your toe or you have a cold or whatever it is, and they don't rush you in right away, you know you're not dying. If they let you wait there for 12 hours, guaranteed, well, they and you never wait for 12 hours, but if you ever had to, you are not going to die. If you go in and they rush you immediately into the back, then you know something serious is happening. Okay, so that basically is the topic for today. Look at that, 11 and a half minutes and we're done this. So here's the um, last little bit for this unit. Okay, so you have a quiz on these five tenants, right? So make sure you get that done. 10 questions, you have, you know, 10 tries. So keep going until you get perfect if you want to. And then this is what your assignment's going to be. Oh gosh, look at this. Ugh. Okay, so do the quiz. All right. So I'm going to do a little reading here and then um, I'll post all this kind of stuff as well and then you can um, work on this, all right? So this is from our grade 10. I always read this to my grade 10 um, class. So SpongeBob, Patrick and Gary were thrilled when Mr. Krabs gave them the chemistry, gave them, gave their teacher a chemistry set. Mr. Krabs warned them to be careful and reminded them to follow the safety rules they had learned in science class. The teacher passed out the materials and provided each person with an experiment book. SpongeBob and Gary flipped through the book and decided to test the properties of mysterious substance. Since the teacher did not tell them to wear safety goggles, they left them on the table. SpongeBob lit the Bunsen burner and then reached across the flame to get a test tube from Gary. In this process, he knocked over a bottle of the mystery substance and a little bit splashed on Gary. He poured, SpongeBob poured some of the substance into a test tube and began to heat it. When it started to bubble, he looked into the test tube to see what was happening and pointed it towards Gary so Gary could see. Gary thought it smelled weird, so he took a deep whiff of it. All right, and it, and it goes on and on and on. But what you're seeing there are SpongeBob and Gary doing everything completely wrong in this story, all right? And I use in grade 10, because then we say, okay, what should they be doing that was correct? So what you guys are gonna do is, there's four um, public health um, topics. You're gonna pick any one of the topics, all right? So the four will be posted. You pick any one of those four, all right? Do not do all four, do not do a mixture of the four, just do one. All right, and then what you're gonna do, read through it, and you're gonna make up a story, a scenario. I don't care who, what names you wanna use, I don't care how you do it, but you're gonna make up a story of people who do something completely wrong, so against what it says in those rules to do, okay? So you're gonna make up a story about one of the four public health topics that you pick, all right? Please don't pick the same one as your friend because if two things come in and look exactly the same, I'm gonna have to give you zeros on it, all right? So pick something different than your friend is gonna pick. Um, so make sure um, you have 10 different scenarios in that story of what people are doing wrong, but do not explain it. So for example, if somebody has bought meat, all right, you can say, you know, just pretend it's SpongeBob and Gary. SpongeBob and Gary left the meat um, on the dashboard of the car while they went for a swim for an hour at the beach. Don't say, but what they should have done was put it in a cooler. Don't say that, all right? Just say what the stuff that is wrong that they're doing. All right. In the, in the past, what we would do is read the stories out loud and then we would discuss them and have a good laugh and it's all good fun. All right. So make sure you have 10 mistakes in your story, but do not explain it. So what I'm going to have posted is the assignment sheet for more, more details and it'll give you the rubric of where your marks are coming from. All right. Now I'm going to put the due date for this Sunday night so that hopefully everyone will get it handed in on time. And because the marks go in at eight o'clock in the morning on uh, Monday morning. So if you want this to be part of your mark, you have to have it in by Sunday night. All right. 
so I can get it. I can read it really quick, use the rubric really quick, mark it, put the marks in, and then that'll, that'll get your mark put up there. Okay. So that's it for now. And I will talk to you later and then we'll be starting our next unit next week. Thanks.